We're still on the breakfast and Plus TV Africa, and thanks for joining us this beautiful day, very first day in the month of September. Uh, we have Ezekiel Nyaito, who's on standby to join the conversation. Ezekiel, thank you so much. We appreciate you every other time. Thanks for having me. I consider it a privilege to be here. Wow. Kofi is also here this morning. I mean, it's good to have you in one piece. <laughs> All right, so as always, uh, uh, we'll be looking through the front pages of the National Dailies. I'd like to start off with the leadership. Quite interesting headlines right here. It says, no end in sight for PDP crisis as WK IU returns to trenches. Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, that's how the leadership is reporting this morning. WK or Tom others were kids when we formed PDP. IU is quoted to say, it feels like what we hear our parents say all the time. Stop being power drunk, respect constitution on rotation. WK loyalists fire back. Party won't get Reavers vote without reward. That's what politics is about. Coker at 70, Jonathan, Northern Governors, Dogara, Lord Bishop for advancing democracy. Diesel price to increase uh, landing costs. We're looking at that's what the depot owners are quoted to say. The landing costs might be on the rise. And uh, Kiamo Tokoa, president can delegate VP to handle security. Wow. President can delegate vice president to handle security. But you know this other issue once upon a time when the president takes off and uh, who becomes the next income. Everyone expects that the president should. But over time, it's, it's been long since the president transmitted you know, power to the vice president every time he's away for official or unofficial duty. Lawana Mechi orders Sean APC peace meeting with Tunubu. Uh, that's what the leadership talks about this morning. And uh, flood, 15 bodies recovered from Meidugri River. That's what Nema is saying. Uh, Tribunal sacks Bari Council Chairman orders rerun in Kuje, <laughs> and that's the headlines on the leadership. Let's go over to the, the Nation newspaper this morning with the following headlines. Uh, the paper gives attention, I think, is a reason why the, the Nation is always um, talking about the PDP crisis. For the past uh, one week, it's in mm. the PDP, you PDP, want to tell PDP. Me. So, uh, but that, this is what the Nation is, 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 is doing. Um, with its headline, the big one there, PDP crisis, are uh, you hits Wike or Tom Makinde Ikpazu? Um, these are uh, Wike's men. Um, Ikpazu has been chilling in Podako for some time now. Uh, it says to that headline with the writers, they are, were nowhere when we formed PDP. A Rivers governor demands state's stake in party. Uh, Mimiko Duke Adoke Ghana accused of feeling crisis, NWC to meet Benway or your Enugu Abia Akwaibum governors. And what, what the papers are saying, Ayu, of course, made a point that um, he will not step down. He will not step down, saying, where were these people when we formed the PDP? And um, their children, you know, as far as uh, their reactions are going, that they don't have a good grasp of what is happening in the party, with their calls for him uh, to step down. And he went on to say in that interview that even if he, he spoke to BBC House of Service, even if he steps down, uh, those who are clamoring for him to be removed, they will never be the ones to produce his successor. Now, the, uh, the PDP spokesman in River State uh, some days ago gave an interview where he said that uh, you ought to step down so the national vice chairman of the PDP South will take over. So it's interesting times to see uh, what happens in the party going forward. But it seems that there, 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 are, there are reports that Chico has been advised to cut his losses and forget um, uh, Wiki, uh, seeing that he may not really have uh, the truthful... Uh, mind to to make peace with with, with wiki there was a gentleman's agreement that none of the both sides will will not make inflammatory statements in public but it seems that has not been honored so we'll see what happens going forward more from the the nation this morning uh, investors maintain 4.5 trillion now gains for eight months and the rather to that says uh 28.3 billion now recorded as net loss in august not too good news uh, we're getting used to this these days as far as the economy is concerned efcc probing down for a governor for alleged money laundering. Akira Dulu accuses federal government of bias in Tompolo's pipeline contract. Uh, the paper has more headlines. Buhari 
governors, Carlo, others, Greek Kuka at 70. Um, some people have been commenting on that as well, you know, asking for other politicians to reveal their real age. Uh, let's go on. Okada Lagos ban. Uh, phase two enforcement kicks off. We hope that there will be no violence with this one. And uh, aviation fuel price hike may affect our operations. Uh, CAS wants. So that is uh, really worrying. This is the chief of air staff. So the thing is, is, is getting more dangerous. Uh, he's seeking import license and depot establishment. All right, we need to look some more into that. 2035 fossil fuel deadline will hurt economy, says the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Some of the headlines on the front page of uh, the nation. And the paper didn't waste any time to put a front page picture showing uh, uh, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka uh, being in, the same, in a photo with um, the governor of Lagos State and the APC presidential candidate. But interestingly, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, former Nigerian president, is also in that picture. So maybe the paper saying two days uh, back to back, Jonathan and Timbu are together. All right, kudos to the nation newspaper. Move on to the next paper. <laughs> well, that's it on the nation, uh, but we also have the Daily Sun newspaper here. Are you wicked trade wards? And uh, those calling for my resignation are kids. That's what the PDP is quoted to say. Or PDP chair, I beg your pardon. I mean, that's how you now telling Wiki that, you know, who, do you know who I am? Nobody can threaten us. Rivers governor is quoted. But if you look at the issue of contention here, and then that's what we constantly talk about, internal democracy in our political parties. And because if you have political parties where internal democracy does not thrive, what becomes of the larger society? Another caption says, resolve us to strike now. Obi tells federal government, that's Peter Obi, how I settle four-month crisis. Jonathan, Nance accuses lecturers of plot to destroy public varsities. Atiku Tamberwell, PDP, challenge weakest case, hearing fixed for September the 4th. Maybe that's the reason why, you know, the very green, you know, suit was very obvious everywhere. Great tie, wonderful hat, you know. Okay. Energy transition plan, vice president departs for the United States amid Kamala Harris and World Bank Group. Uh, Emirate wins states or install flight operations in Lagos. That's uh, very good for Nigerians. Nigerians oil revenue down 28% to 799 billion in the first quarter of 2022. That's what the Central Bank of Nigeria is saying. INEC wants election observers against late application. Buhari told Tom, I never ordered security agents not to touch Fulani killer headsmen. Okay. Governors, SGF, Kalu hails Bishop Coker as he turns 70. APC wounds get 25% in most states. That's what the PDP is saying. Hmm. Okay. Well, the headlines on the Daily Sun newspaper. Let's go over to the last paper we have on our table this morning. This happens to be the Punch newspaper, and it's also staying with the 2023 presidential elections. And this time, the lead story focuses on the APC presidential aspirants meeting that was meant to hold in Abuja. The, the headlines from the papers may be somewhat dismissing. Uh, it would be interesting to see what our guest thinks. Because what we're told, a report we're told, is that the meeting was called by the, the, uh, one of the presidential candidates, uh, uh, Dr. Felix who was the youngest APC presidential aspirants, rather. And um, he called that meeting, uh, later had to send a text message to the aspirants saying the meeting had been postponed. Um, but some people feel this is because the, the, uh, uh, the aspirants were not showing uh, commitment to holding that meeting. The president, the vice president, had already traveled uh, out by 1.21 a.m. He was climbing, uh, boarding the presidential jet or vice presidential jet to the United States of America for, I'm sure, an already scheduled meeting. So such a meeting holding without VP may not um, uh, be, be that good. So it might still hold, but this is what the paper says. 2023 poll, APC presidential aspirant Sean Abuja meeting. The writers, APC presidential primary co-contestant should not be ignored, says aspirant. And Tinubu Shatima, unaware of meeting, says campaign team. Uh, or Shibajo jets out to United States. All right, so that's that. Uh, more from the paper. Banks' assets rise by 22%, now 65 trillion naira. I won't allow anyone to stabilize PDP, are you? 
$265 million. Emirates makes U-turn to resume flights. It's very good news. Maybe, uh, I guess, you'll tell us more about that. Name terrorism sponsors oil thieves, will be tells federal government. Um, strike, ASU welcomes governor's intervention wants sincerity. Strike, ASU welcomes governor's intervention wants sincerity. Uh, Kukat 7, Nigeria derailing needs right leaders, says Jonathan. Nigeria records 1.7 million rights violations, children worse hit. It's a worrying statistic there. EFCC arrests 13 illegal miners, impounds five trucks, and 32 states fail to attract investment in Q2. Um, let's now welcome Ezekiel and I took our guest this morning to give us his thoughts on the papers, uh, uh, what the papers are saying and what we put out uh, as the headlines this morning. Um, Architect Ezekiel and I took a morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Good morning, and again, thanks for having me. All right, let's start with the, the, the punch and um, the, the seeming shunning of a meeting called by uh, one of the presidential aspirants for the presidential aspirants or former aspirants on the platform of the APC to put their heads together. Um, do you think, from the information available, that they shunned the meeting? Because I'm told the man sent a message around to them on the day of the meeting saying it had been postponed. Do you think that they're unwilling to to come together. Should we read so much into this? OK. Um, I was once the secretary of the Aspirants Forum when I contested the governorship in 2007. That was the first time. Um, and when you don't get the ticket and you, uh, you, you get to form a forum of some sort, you are either sent by the, the man who's won the ticket, and it's like, please, can you help me get people together and let us um, run with one voice? Or you are being ignored by the person who's got the ticket, and then you are asking your other people to come together and um, let us try and let's put some threat to him to say, look, we had a lot of support base. If we put it together, you better just take us into what you are doing because if we don't come together and work for you and we choose to work against you, you know, it's going to be difficult for you. So it's either you are trying to threaten the person or you are trying to work for the person. Now, if you are trying to work for the person, the question is why would the candidate want somebody else to call the people, his other you know, fellow aspirants for him. It's not likely. If he's favorably disposed to working with the aspirants, he's going to like say, get across to them. And the aspirants will be only too happy to be called by the candidate to work for them. Usually, it is the other way. They feel ignored by the candidate. And they feel they've spent so much so they would like to get something back from the candidate. At the same time, the candidate is so pressured by what he's got to spend for the general election. So he's trying to say, guys, you know what? Let's just work together. And when we get the government, we can now be accommodated. And these Arab fans are saying, we've seen this before, man. Once you get the, 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 the government, we can't even come close to you anymore, even as a... Uh, uh, from our colleagues, so to speak. So I foresee a situation where these are aggrieved, you know, aspirants and um, they feel ignored or they've made certain demands for a certain uh, amount of what they invested to be returned to them. And usually those claims are, are, are outrageous. You know, a guy will tell you that, you know, for my primaries, you know, there are different categories, like I'm running the governorship of my state today. And out of, uh, we are, we're supposed to be 18 political parties. You always have what you call the contenders and then the pretenders. As at today, there are some, maybe about three, four parties are being heard in my state, you know? And um, obviously mine is one of, um, <laughs> I have no problem, no cuts, no missing this, no that. I'm just, I'm just as cool as can be. Anyway, so, there are some names you haven't heard at all. And then you, you, you win, and then they're asking you that we spent, you know, 500 million, we spent 800 million. I know that's just absolute bunkum. So how do you start to address that? Now, 
these false claims against how much you have to spend and you know within the context of what you have makes it almost um, uh, you know uh, conventional for the the candidates to seemingly ignore the aspirants and giving them just let's work on hope i think that what must have happened is that these people feel aggrieved they feel ignored they want to put a pressure and use that pressure to mount on you know the candidates to take care of them before time and you know if you know bola ahmed tinubu very well he is he's 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 he understands the game so what he's going to do is going to be even if there were maybe 10 he's going to pick the top 3 privately directly indirectly and take care of them and those are the the wind in the sail of the uh, aspirant take off the vice president tell him you can't be part of this at a time like this you can't take off one two three other key people a man like um like um amechi you can't dismiss him with a wave of the hand have a deal we have an understanding with uh, uh you know uh, uh amechi and then when you call a meeting and the top three outside of the winner is not available, the meeting looks weak. And then um, before you know, there's yeah, nothing to write to him about. Talk, yeah. Actors, so I about... think that the guy must have um, made the handwriting and then um, called off the meeting. Yeah. Very quickly, Actor, before we go to the next uh, uh, and headline with, with Mercy, um, someone was saying that um, Tinubu is, 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 is going to deal with uh, Lawan. You're talking about the top three, top four of the aspirants who came behind um, uh, Tinubu in that APC presidential primary, that um, the, maybe the travails of Lawan may not be unconnected with them, uh, with uh, Tinubu who came out the winner, that maybe he will not forgive them, uh, those who challenged him, uh, especially if you look at his speech, at his victory speech at the APC presidential rally at Eagle Square, um, you know, some things he said when he addressed Lawan. You know, so I, I, I know you, you watched that speech, uh, so do you think that uh, we should take all these for granted? You know, you look at the case that uh, Lawan is facing with uh, Machina, his um, uh, so-called placeholder in, in, in Yobe State, in the senatorial uh, primaries. There are many things in that speech that we should probably just leave it for now, because um, the, there are many things I question, not just what he said, but how he said what he said, and things like that. And I'm sure that you won't want me to go into the details, but you see, Politics is a very complicated game, uh, very technical, that is being analyzed by people who don't understand the rules of the game. Every game has its rules. You know, there's a lot of, like, when you read a lot of things in the social media, you know, there's a lot of very intellectual analysis and discourses. And in politics, lines are not always straight. Sometimes you plant certain things. You don't want, you see... If, if, if I want to settle you, for instance, in politics, I'm going to tell you, oh boy, if, if we appear to be friends, they, they, will, they will think you've settled me and all my supporters are going to come and say, look, the good relationship that you have with your prayer, with them, you know, your winner, means that he must have taken care of you. We work for you. So if he took care of you, also take care of us. So one of the things to do is you can have a kind of um, an understanding that you take care of me. But you see, we're going to fight in public, but you see, the fight is not such that it's going to enjoy you. That is one. The second part is somebody who's made an impossible demand. You do everything to please that person, and the guy is just not, not listening to you and has even threatened you. And you're like, if I become a president, this guy is going to be a problem to me. So what do I do? I go out of my way to make sure that I, I, I make sure he does not get whatever position he needs to i use my office my position my disposition all in my within my arsenal to stop the person so you need to know the relationship between lawan and um, tinubu at this point in time which of the baskets of the strategies and the games of politics they belong so don't be too much in a hurry to draw certain analysis you know or conclusions politics is very very complicated and and you know, Tinubu is trying very well because I, I tend to give credit more to the Northerners who are more politically serving. But we are more politically intellectual. And, you know, 
things don't always work like that. Laws are laws, rules are rules, and politics is a game that has its own rules, and you play by it. You know, one of the, one of my closest friends, you know, in the north, you know, uh, I would say my political godfather, so to speak. You know, um, he, he said politics is the only game that hates you win, tail you win, depending on if you understand the game. You know, so. Let's not be too intellectual in analysis of what is going on, because what is behind is always more than what is in front in politics. All right, then. Uh, let's take a look at the Daily Sun newspaper. Uh, same also with the leadership. It talks about the crisis uh, that's going on with the PDP. Are you weak trade wards? And he says those calling for my resignation are kids. That's what the PDP chair is saying. Uh, nobody can threaten us in River State. But I want us to see. Now, the leadership says that no end in sight for PDP crisis as we can IU returns to trenches. I mean, of course, having exchanging those words now. Uh, but, but my question to you is that the consent of, you know, Wiki, do you think that they are really, really, um, you know, rational? in terms of you I'll, know the I'll, party I'll constitution and all that's going on you you have a chairman from the north you also have a northern presidential candidate yeah. and what have you do you think that it's his his concerns are very valid and rational yeah let, let me is another you know i've been the national chairman of a party before another issue that we are discussing deliberating without understanding is how party politics works as I gave kudos to um, to uh, a large uh, article, uh, not article, uh, Ashiwaju, I'm really so surprised, really surprised at how um, a large article is taking this whole thing. I, I can't, I've tried to you know, wrap my head around it. I really can't for one, two, three reasons. Number one is that for whatever it is worth, you want to have peace for you to campaign. You know, there are two, there are two seasons in, in, in politics. The sitting just before campaigns, before, before, before election, you know, you have first part of getting to the primary. Before you get to the primary, you want to control the structure of the party so that you can win your primary. The moment you get the ticket of the party, you can run independent of the party. It could be dangerous. You are better running. You are better off running with the party. But sometimes the party puts such weight and load on you that you can run independent. That is what Jonathan did when he, he created Tan. Rather than work with the the machinery of the party, he worked with the machinery of Tan. And there's nothing wrong with it. You can set up instead of a local government chairman or the chapter chairman, you can have a chapter coordinator, a ward coordinator, a unit coordinator. You can use that of the party, you can use that of your own independently. Why am I saying this? I expected that for whatever it is worth, that Alaji Atiku will bend over backwards and just seal a deal with Wike. In politics, it's about negotiation. You've got to win some, you've got to lose some. Okay, it's only when the person becomes impossible that you now go to plan B. Plan A is always reconciliation. Now, come to the national chairman where he comes from, where he doesn't come from. Again, we are acting based on abysmal ignorance and, and uh, you know, uh, you know uh, what they call it, assumptions that do not apply. I'll tell you how it is. Offices within the party are zoned north-south. Okay, and if you had given your national chairman to the north, for instance, the best you can have is the deputy national chairman holding place in the absence of the national chairman. You can't elevate the deputy national chairman to make him a substantial chairman because the position of the chairman is for that zone. It's happening in, in my state, you know, where in my party, the state chairman was from Uyo Senatorial District, while the deputy is from Ikode Pene Senatorial District. Because of how close it is to the elections, because the, the state chairman came to compose a contest, so the position is vacant, 
I cannot make, uh, we cannot make the deputy national cha state chairman to become the substantive chairman because that belongs to another senatorial district in, uh, in that of the national is not south. So what you can do is prevail on the party for the deputy national chairman to hold forth, hold forth while, you know, till the election is over, okay? Now, that will be on the condition that the national chairman himself decides to step down if he do, or is removed. If he is removed, still you cannot make the deputy substantial because it is zoned to a particular area. You have to go to another convention and get another person from that zone, and that's complicated. In a situation where IU says, I'm not going to step down, I want to remain, it does not stop you from running your election. And by the time you remove the, the chairman to put another person, then you are probably going to create problems for the man who is contesting. And the man in the eye of the storm right now is Atiku and not Wike. Wike is a politician who is trying to get the very best and he's entitled to it. It is his right. He can say, I don't want that man, but that's how far he goes. He, can, he has to go through the National Working Committee or the National Executive Council. Council to be able to get them as an individual, he cannot prosecute that unless he goes to court and the court gives that injunction. And I don't think any court will do it. But this is where my worry is. I feel really, really embarrassed that are you the national chairman will make the level of the sort of childish, pardon my language, comment that he's making. How can you call a governor a, a boy? How can you call a man like Donald Duke a boy? I want to ask, where was IU when PDP was in crisis and nobody could be seen, nobody could fund, nobody could talk except one man, uh, Wike? They should give Wike, I, I don't agree with some of the things that Wike is doing, but they should give him the credit. He can't come and call him, where were you when we formed the party? Did you really form the party? I want to ask him, where is the, the first, uh, you know, uh, 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 Dr. Alex uh, Ekweme is 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 um is late now, but the first secretary of that G um, thirty six, I think it was eighteen or thirty six. The first secretary is still alive. Where is the man today? Before that man is, are you a boy or a man? So don't 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 paint people that are governors or elders of the party. I started with the PDP, so I can say this. That for it, you to yeah, to, but we'll just a quick one now. It's, it's in continuation of your uh, thought pattern. Uh, we're talking about Atiku, uh, we're talking about Wiki and Ayu, and following the development, uh, th this uh, hearing, because Wiki has actually, you know, filed a case, uh, suits in court, asking that uh, Atiku be dismissed as presidential candidate or sacked as presidential well, candidate. Messi, before but, but, he, he said he's, he, he, he's not behind the suit. No, no, but... He publicly, but, he said he's but, not behind but, it. But, but, I mean, he, but, he doesn't know it, anything about the suit. Uh, but yeah. how can he say... I mean, but this is what we have now. These are the issues. And then secondly, on the other hand, because I don't know whose reports I believe, if you look at all the reports uh, and, and, the, and the news you have, uh, him, there's going to be hearing, I think on the 14th of this month, uh, there's going to be a hearing on that particular case, even though there are cases where, I mean, others have asked that this case be uh, thwarted and be dismissed entirely. But he's also publicly said that he is ensuring that the structures of the APC are demolished. And his actions, you know, one or the other time, it's not really in consonance with the things that he's saying. I mean, what do you make of this behavior and the PDP? One would think that the PDP if, if, is an opposition, a big opposition, and then they should have understood the times and ensure that there are no frackers in the party, especially ahead of the 2023 election. But of course, you have other political parties. If, if you were a very serious Christian that is against any form of deceit, either in spoken word or by action, do you understand me? you will hit Messi on the football pitch because he makes you feel he's going this way and then you want to go, he goes the other way. So he's like, he's deceitful. So a, a Christian, those very tight Christians can feel this guy, he, he's, he's not truthful, he's not honest, he deceives people. So, and the person will be right. But you know that that one now waiting for Bob B. You understand me? 
what Wike is doing, Wike is because getting skilled in so, politics and politicking. So you say he's a dribbler. And he's applying, yes, he's a dribbler. He's becoming a skillful dribbler. He knows that you can't put all your eggs in one basket. He knows that these guys are coming. He's getting a lot of intel. So he's putting himself in a situation. Did you see today APC will come and, you know, address him tomorrow. He's become a maker of some sort. As you think of PDP, he's got to think of his life. He's going to talk, think of his party, his future. He's going to think of his state and his stake. Wicked does not want to be a national this at this point. He wants to be the king of River State. He has a man that is looking over his shoulders in the person of Amechi. Can you see what is going on in uh, APC in, uh, in River State? Wicked has got his hands, I dare say this with every sense of response, he's got his hands in all the pies. Wicked is thinking of his life himself and, and you know, politics is a game of interest. How do you, for instance, you may not understand this, but if you were in Akwaibom, you can't wrap your head around the fact that Akwabio is in APC because Akwabio is PDP. Everything about Akwabio, everything about PDP, you can trace it largely back to Akwabio. Do you understand me? But he is not in PDP, he's in APC. And don't be surprised that you wake up tomorrow and they say, well, the guy has come back to PDP. You get the point? So for them, party is just vehicles. You want to go to Abuja, you can use any airline. You are in Lagos. You can use any airline. The important thing is you want to go to Lagos. And then somebody says, oh, you've been flying ADC or not ADC now. ADC is late. <laughs> you've been flying, uh, what's the, Ibom Air, Ibom Air. Why are you now going to Arik Air? And you're like, bros, I won't go to Lagos. I'm not a shareholder in Ibom Air. We're just, I just patronize them. Nobody is a shareholder in any party. They just patronize the party to take them where they want to go. That is why Atiku has been in APC. Atiku is in PDP. Look at what has happened in uh, Kano. Shekarao, in how many months? APC, NNPP, PDP. And who knows? He might just end up with ADC any of these days. So you need, please don't kill yourself. You don't, no, no. Relax and watch these people. The important thing is, what is your own interest? Who best serves your own interest? Stop playing other people's game and start to play your game. And that's what I tell Nigerians. Stop bothering about what Wike is doing. Wike is playing his game, and you are busy losing your time. What you should spend your time doing as a Nigerian is, of all these people, who best serves my interest? If your interest is in education, you're a lecturer or within the academia, who is giving you the sound bites that make sense? All right, if you're uh, a uh, right. we have to move on quickly, uh, architect is no. yeah, too. Interesting, interesting point you've made, but you know, when I when, when people sometimes will say, well, what kind of what interests are we talking about? Is it personal interest, political interest, or national interest? And most times Nigerians will say, well, they want to see more of national interest being the number one reason why people do what they do, not personal interest, financial interest, or political interest. And um, so well, let's see how it plays out. But we have um, a, a headline on the front page of the leadership, which I think you love to speak about, which um, has to do with uh, what Shetima said, the uh, vice presidential candidate or the running mate on the uh, presidential ticket of the All Progressives Congress. He talked about himself as vice president taking charge of security in the country, and uh, some people have been up in arms in reaction to this. Uh, one of those was uh, Governor Ifan Yokoa of the PDP, who incidentally is uh, um, uh, Shetima's uh, counterpart or rival in the PDP. He's, of course, doing what he has to do. But um, Festus Kiamo has replied Ifan Yokoa, uh, who has been talking a lot recently. He also had to say some things about Tompolo. Well, this is what Kiamo says. President can delegate VP to handle security. Your thoughts, please. Yes, of course. The president can delegate anybody to handle anything. He has that constitutional right, prerogative, power, and whatever you can call it. But, you know, I, I, I don't know if... I know that the memory of man is treacherous, but I don't know if Shetima really believes that Nigerians forget too, too, too soon. If I were him, he speaks very well at the NBA. He came across as somebody who is articulate and things like that. If I were him, I will do everything humanly possible to avoid 
being linked to security. I will. Because to a great extent, true or false, the insecurity of Nigeria today is being traced right down to him to a great extent. Speculation, it could be. So why don't you just avoid that topic completely? Talk in terms of what you can do. Why would you want to tell me that Nigeria would want to entrust you with the security of Nigeria? Haba. Haba. I think um, uh, Mr. Tinubu should have his strategist tell him that, you know, this guy shone brightly at the NBA, aside from his uh, dressing anyway. But I don't know who am I. I'm an old man. Maybe it was a new fashion sense. And um, at 58, I'm probably not as current. But aside from his dressing, he sounded quite articulate and pretty impressive. So why don't we look at roles within that area that Nigerians can be distracted and they will look the other way? Why would he, of all people, come to talk to us about security. I think that guy should just relax though, because let him do a, 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 a opinion sampling and get to know what Nigerians think of him and security. That's the advice I will give. Whatever is the result of that poll, they should take it religiously. We need to go now. Is it Kenya, I took, thank you so much. I mean, it feels like we should continue this conversation, but time is not our friend at this point. Thank you so much. Okay, I mean, I've seen you, you know, on national TV, and in, we, we interact with you almost every weekend. Um, <laughs> you're quite fashionable. Oh, well, I'm not Thank sure he... Had, okay, he maybe had, he really he had, had that. Had <laughs> but, you know, but this is one thing I just want to say. I mean, I, I eloquence... Need, I, needed, I needed to know... I needed, no, I needed to know if it was, you know, how you hit somebody from the other side or it was a fact. So I was trying to look at your face... <laughs> And see if you were making fun of me or you. No, 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 no. He meant it. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. No, he meant it. I mean, Kofi will mean it when he says that he meant it. Well, we look up to you, so you know. Well, I just hope that you know all of the eloquence that we're experiencing with some of these candidates and people, because that's not it. We have seen governors that are very, you know, eloquent. They sound very intelligent. They are very smart, but that hasn't translated to development and you know improvement we in the standard of living Marian, I, I, I know Marian Marian approach. <laughs> back to 20 years and oh, 10 really? years and profiling to speak it needs we, we, we understand like, that's what I, but, but you but you also understand where i'm coming from i mean we we know some of these governors do, intellectually do, sound but nothing to show for well i, 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 I know messi referring <laughs> to all the candidates so let's see that that's how much we can take now <laughs> thank you so much as we will come back to you next week thanks so much what a pleasure and privilege thank you well, that's the size of, of the press, quite interesting. Uh, speaking with Zika and Yai, took every other time. Uh, we will definitely return with uh, Off the Press tomorrow. We'll take a break now. When we return, it'll be time for us to look at our first major conversation. But both, just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history, the first day in the month of September.